do I build a UX portfolio? Should I only use Figma or try other tools like XD Sketch and Webflow? Are there any free resources to learn this skill? How can I use AI tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney in UX design? What is the future of UX design? Will AI replace me? If this is what you're asking yourself time and again, don't worry, I've got you covered. Today, I'm going to give you a complete UX roadmap that you can follow for your upcoming design journey. Here, I'll share free resources, softwares, tools that you can use. I'll also talk about where you can apply for jobs and internships and how you can advance as a designer. This roadmap is essential for you because without it, you may have difficulty advancing in your career, securing better opportunities or standing out in the design field. So if you're ready, let's get into the video. One of the frequently asked questions regarding the UX design is about eligibility. I am XYZ and I have been doing ABC. Can I be a UX designer now? So let me tell you whether you are a recent high school graduate or a seasoned professional looking for a career change, this field is open to everyone. Anyone from any walk of life can pursue UX design as a career if you have the intent and the right mindset to learn it in the right way. Of course, there are some hardware prerequisites. You'll need a computer, ideally a laptop with internet connection. So please get yourself one if you don't have it already. Next, one of the first and the foremost things that I would want all of you to do is to start looking at the world like a designer. Confused? Let me explain. Every human being who can looks at the world, but that's about it. As a designer, you'll have to do more than just looking at something. You'll have to look, observe and analyze like a designer. Whatever you see around, let's take this bottle for instance, make it a habit to ask some questions in your head. What is this? What is it supposed to do? Who is it made for? Why is the shape and form like this? Could it be some other way as well? How is someone supposed to use this? When I look at it, do I understand what it is? Do I feel good seeing, touching and feeling this? What will happen if my hands are dirty, soapy or slippery? What if I accidentally drop it? What else can I do with this? These are some sample questions. You'll see most of these questions starts with the who, what, why and how. The common question words. Some of you might be thinking, why do I need to do this? It's because whenever you're designing as a professional, you are focused thinking in your zone. When you are in this zone thinking, you're essentially having a conversation with yourself inside your head. And if you start doing this over time, you will see this becoming your habit. So whenever you see anything around, these questions will automatically start popping in your head and also the answers to them. And based on these questions and answers, you will be able to analyze how good or bad the design of the object is, in which situations it will work, where it will not work, and how you could make some modifications to make it better. This is what I mean by looking at the world like a designer. It should become a natural process for you. Every good designer in this world does it and it's a natural process for them. All right, now let's talk about something exciting tools that you can use to level up your design skills. Figma is the industry standard software. So make sure to master it. It's very easy. Figma is good enough to get you going for 90% of the cases where you are doing hands-on design. But if you want to go beyond that, I would definitely recommend you try out ProtoPie, which is a great tool for high fidelity prototyping that can make real app like prototypes. Nope, you don't need to write a single line of code for it. The more skills you possess, the more versatile you become as a designer. I've made a video about these tools, which you can check out to better understand them. All right, now let's break down our UX learning process into bite sized pieces. First up, it's crucial to understand the difference between UI, UX, product. What the hell are these? Figma's resource library has an awesome article on this topic. Additionally, I've also made a video which is UX design versus product design because many people get confused with these titles. That's by the way, the first video I ever made on this channel. So I highly recommend you go check that out as well. You would also want to explore the significance of UX design and its impact in the success of products. It's all about creating intuitive user experiences, you see. From my side, I made two videos on this topic. One video is about design process. Another one goes by the name 10 UX laws, terms and principles everyone should know. Now let's talk about some free resources which you can use to get started in UX design. The first one is a website called designsystems.com by Figma. The website features a number of articles and tutorials that explain the different components of design systems such as style guides, component libraries and documentation. The case studies on designsystems.com highlight how companies like Google, Airbnb and Spotify have used design systems to improve their product development process and create more consistent 
user experiences. Next is Figma Resource Library. It includes a number of pre-built components and templates that can be used to create basic user interfaces quickly and easily. This can be a great way to get started with UX design even if you have no prior experience. One of the best things about Figma Resource Library is that it is constantly being updated with new assets from top designers around the world. This means you can always have the latest and the greatest trends in design. You can also check out the playlist Figma for Beginners on Figma's YouTube channel. The playlist takes you on a quick tour of key features through a rough approximation of the design process where you design a mobile app together. Then you can check out this playlist where you dive into the Figma features and learn how to speed up your design workflow. Figma also has another playlist where you learn to create fluid and responsive designs to save time, bring design close to technologies like Flexbox, Box. The tutorials will guide you through the process from a blank canvas to a complete component. Alright, so we have been talking about tools, but I would also want to talk about another kind of tools before we get into some more interesting stuff. The next set of tools are AI tools. When you're done with the videos I mentioned above, I want you to learn how to use AI tools to help you in your UX design journey. AI tools can be a game changer for you. AI can help you streamline processes, gather valuable insights and enhance the user experience. You can use ChatGPT to generate personas, interview questions and survey prompts, essentially anything that has got to do with text. And for visual ideation, you can use Midjourney to generate visual concepts for UI designs. For example, you could ask it to generate a mock-up of a new landing page or to generate different design options for a particular illustration and so on. ChatGPT has a free option, but Midjourney, they've recently made it paid. So yeah, you'll have to shell out some money if you want to be used Midjourney. As an alternative, you can go with other image generation tools like Jasper art and leonardo.ai all i want to say is that ai tools can be a valuable asset for you as a designer by using ai tools you can save time improve efficiency and create more user-friendly and accessible designs in a very short time it's not here to replace you it's here to speed you up by doing some redundant pieces of work so that you can focus on the things that really really matter now what are the things that really matter let's get there along with design softwares and tools which we have just spoken about it's equally important for a UX designer to understand user psychology. Now don't get scared by the word psychology. It's nothing but an understanding of how other human beings, that is your users, think, feel and behave. It's basic empathy. This understanding of humans will help you to design experiences that are both easy to use and enjoyable to interact with, something that are more likely to be adopted and used by your users. For this, you'll need to dive into case studies to learn how users interact with digital products and more importantly, how other established designers think. Figma has its Medium page where they share some of these case studies, but one of my favorite destinations for case studies is growth.design. Well, these are not traditional case studies. They are more of teardown of existing apps and products. They are written in a non-conventional way, but they are very well analyzed and very detailed. I also review case studies on this YouTube channel on a weekly basis. I have a separate playlist for that, which goes by the name Sapta Reviews. You must go through every video in that list to understand how industry reviews case studies and how your work will be reviewed when you apply to a company. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get the latest case study reviews. Along with that, I've also shared my own case study on this channel, my first case study which helped me to get my first design job. There were so many mistakes that I made in that case study which I openly criticized so that you don't make those mistakes in your case studies. These are all available for free. Alright, once you've got the knowledge, it's time to put it into practice. Start with passion projects or dummy projects to hone your skills. Redesign existing websites or apps for free, just out of interest. Showcasing your creativity and problem solving abilities and don't forget to show off your work online. Platforms like Medium, Behance and Dribble are excellent for sharing your designs and insights. Creating before and after comparison in case it's a redesign that you've done and video breakdowns of your work can give you a real edge. This not only showcases your design skills but also demonstrates your thought process. You can check out my profiles if you want some inspiration. I'll leave the link of the Medium and the Dribble profile. Now, building a strong portfolio is essential for landing a UX design job. Include your best work in the form of case studies. Three to four case studies should be ideal in your portfolio. It's also fine if you have one or two of them but make sure they're detailed and it reflects your ability as a designer both from a thinking 
and hands-on aspects. These case studies provide a deep dive into your design thinking, which potential employers would love to see. You can check out this video to build your portfolio. I've shared some insights in it, which will be really helpful to you. All right, now let's talk about where to apply. Where do you apply for the jobs? VC-backed startup agencies and design-focused MNCs are excellent places to start your career. If you want to work with startups, you can check out wellfound.com. Previously, it was called angellist.com. You might have heard. Here, you will get to see VC-backed startups who need interns or employees. Another great way to apply is via social media platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. Now, this could be a slightly long-term strategy. All that you need to do is follow and connect with designers from companies where you'd want to work one day. Observe and interact with the posts that they make. If they post about design, you can drop a well-thought comment expressing your point of view. That way, they will start knowing you as a designer. And whenever there are openings in those companies, they will also post about that. And by then, if you had already established your identity as a designer in front of them, there's a higher likelihood of them going through your portfolio before others. Of course, you'll have to back it up with some great work. There's another way as well, which is sending cold mails. I've made a dedicated video on this where you could draft a cold mail using chat GPT and also send it to people and also how to find the email IDs of those people. I mentioned everything in the video, so please make sure you check that out. Now, you might be wondering, um, what about pay? I need to get paid. How much will I make as a UX designer? Well, it varies depending on your location and experience. Websites like Glassdoor can give you a rough estimate of what you can expect, but an average number can only do so much good. In India, a well-funded startup can pay 15 to 20 lakhs per annum for a beginner UX designer. Of course, to land a job in a company like that, you'll have to be that good. And I strongly feel that you should definitely aim for the best. But let me also remind you that your journey doesn't end when you land in your first job. It's crucial to keep updating your portfolio with work and creating new case studies and developing new skills. Consistently demonstrating your growth as a designer will open doors to bigger responsibilities and higher paying roles. Take me for an example. When I got my first design job, I was all happy and cheerful. But just after three to four weeks, a senior executive of design called me in his office and told me that I was not delivering the results as expected. At first, I tried to escape, but eventually I understood that I need to get better because that's the only way to move forward. I learned new technologies and softwares which helped me excel in my career. And yes, please don't take the soft skills on a lighter note. They are crucial, very, very crucial. So crucial that they can make or break your career. Effective communication is really a key, not just for chatting with your co-workers, but also justifying your design decisions to your co-workers, to your leadership people, to your managers and everyone, which is an important part of design. Your design doesn't just end on Figma. You also have to explain why have you taken that decision. Good communication also increases your chances of clearing interviews. Watch this video by Chris Du to learn the basic elements of communication. Next, you also need to learn how to get people to say yes and master the art of pursuit. These skills will set you apart in the competitive world of design. You can check out this video to increase your chances of clearing interviews or closing clients. Now, with time, as you gain experience, you can explore full-time offers or continue freelancing. And remember, working with teams is an essential part of UX design. Build your confidence, improve your leadership skills, and even consider mentorship as you advance in your career. I will link down videos that you can go through to get to know these skills I just spoke about. Confidence. Speak more confidently. An introvert's guide to working with clients. I will leave it linked. Leadership. How to build expertise while learning. Management. I strongly believe after doing all this, you can be a designer who can be a great fit into any company. But that's not where you stop. Keep advancing your skills. Be an expert of your subject. As you do that, you will simultaneously see your salary growing. If you want to see my salary growth as an Indian designer, check out this video. It's a two-year-old video though, but it'll still give you an idea about what is possible. It has everything that you need to know here. All right, so we are talking about advancing as a designer. But how do you do that? The simplest answer is obviously to take higher designing roles via working on your craft. Another way to advance in your career is to learn technologies like like spatial design. It's an existing area to explore, which is often get used in AR and VR. Spatial design is a field of design that focuses on creating user experiences in three-dimensional spaces. Spatial designers considers factors such as the physical environment, the user's movements, and the user's interaction with the objects and the users. You see, it's just the form which is different. The fundamentals of design do not really change. So all that questioning when you look at anything, all that brainstorming and thinking, 
remain same. It's just that the form in which it is getting translated for the end user is different in case of spatial design. You've heard of Apple Design Pro, right? It is designed for spatial computing. Apple's own human interface guidelines provide valuable insights regarding spatial design. So I highly recommend you go check that out as well. Stay up to date with emerging trends and you'll be well prepared for the evolving world of UX. Speaking of which, the future of UX is incredibly exciting. With the rise of new technologies such as virtual reality, augmented reality, and AI, designers will have new and innovative ways to create user experiences. Another trend in UX design is the move towards more immersive experiences. VR and AR can be used to create user interfaces that are more realistic and engaging. For example, a VR interface could allow a user to virtually explore a product before they buy it. To prepare for the future of UX, you need to be adaptable and willing to learn new skills. And I hope this video was helpful to teach you how could you do that. All the resources I mentioned in this video will be there in the descriptions. Go check them out. And if you feel confused, don't hesitate to watch the video again. So that was all from my side. If you found this video useful, please like and share it in your network and please hit that subscribe button. It motivates me to create more content for you. This is Sapta. See you folks in the next one.